Hello, welcome to another episode of Purple Insider. Matthew Collar here, and let's get right into the Minnesota Vikings making a trade for Jalen Rager and a couple of other news items that we have to get to. But starting out with the Rager trade, uh, the Vikings not only acquired the guy that was taken before Justin Jefferson. Jalen Rager, wide receiver TCU to Ooh. the Eagles. Let's go get him. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Pat. I, I'm on it. Nice. Get Justin Jefferson on the clock nice. right now. I'm on it. Wow. And bring him here to Minnesota to be receiver depth. But they also move on from Amir Smith-Marset. So let's talk about what these things mean. First of all, Jalen Rager, well, he has not become a good wide receiver yet for the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, did make catches in the NFL and made some plays. And so I think what the Vikings are looking for here is somebody who can reasonably step into NFL games with some experience and possibly help if there are injuries. And that's really all they're looking for. And that is consonant with the draft capital that the Vikings gave up. They gave up a conditional fourth, which is worth mentioning conditional. So if Jalen Rager does not meet whatever statistical markers there are, it will end up being a fifth rounder, which is the equivalent of giving up not exactly a whole lot. Um, so the Vikings end up giving up just a little bit to get somebody who they must believe has some future potential or at least the potential for future potential. I mean, this is what happens, right? Like around the league, if somebody is drafted in the first round, what always ends up going on is they get cut or traded and the team that picks them up, they think that there might be something else there. And with Rager, it hasn't been great in Philadelphia, but it hasn't also been like Laquan Treadwell, where there was very clearly right from the get go, nothing there for Treadwell. He had one catch in his first year. I mean, at least with Jalen Rager, he does have receptions, yards, like proof that he can get into NFL games and make catches. And I know that that's a low bar, but that at least signals that there might be something there. And he's under contract through next year. So if the Vikings do end up finding something in Rager that is useful, then they get to have him for next season and they could potentially sign him long term. And it could end up being a play that has a high upside. And the low side is if KJ Osborne gets hurt, then Jalen Rager can go in. So not a particularly high price for Rager to come here and at least depth if someone goes down that is more reliable than what they had. Now, the, the reason for trading for Rager is that BC Johnson went down and BC Johnson was that proven depth of someone who could get in, run the offense the right way, make catches on throws that came his way, block when he's asked to block. Like the reliability of BC Johnson was going to be missed by this team quite a bit. So they're hoping to get that in a semi-experienced wide receiver in Jalen Rager. Now, moving on from Amir Smith-Marset, I think this came as a surprise to some people, but uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that Smith-Marset had difficulty mastering the ins and outs and the details of the Minnesota Vikings offense. There were times where you would see people talking to him after plays. It's hard to know when we're watching practice if someone ran the right route, but the coaches would certainly know. And then in the preseason games, we saw a couple of nice catches by Smith Marset. We also saw a bobbled ball. We saw a fumble. We saw a kickoff that he fumbled, that he dropped. I mean, th th there were moments where you went like, okay, I'm not sure that they can really trust him to be where he needs to be when he's supposed to be there. And I would still say that Smith Marset is somebody that has some upside and maybe another team can pick him up, but he wasn't drafted by this regime. And they must have felt after going through the entire process of the preseason that that upside was not worth keeping and it was better to bring in an experienced receiver in Jalen Rager. So it does come as a bit of a surprise, but also judging by the way they've handled the 2021 draft class, where almost everyone from that draft class is gone. Jiggle, jiggle, it folds. I'd like to see you wiggle, wiggle, for sure. And make me want to dribble, dribble, you know, right in my feet. You Except for Christian Derrissaw and Cam Bynum, but everybody else uh, has essentially been cleared out of that draft class. And uh, I think that it wasn't a great draft to begin with in the later rounds. 
So they end up taking somebody like Smith Marset, hoping he can make good on some of the physical talents, but he really didn't show that big of a sign of progress that this off season looked a lot like last off season. And I think the same goes for someone like Kellen Mond, where they allowed Mond to have a second shot at it to show that uh, there was something more there than he had shown as a rookie in training camp. And there wasn't big progress made. So they felt comfortable with moving on from him. And instead they're going to keep, it appears Jalen Naylor, who was their sixth round draft pick. So they gave Amir Smith Marset all the opportunity in the world, lots of second team reps, lots of preseason time, and still came away feeling like Jalen Naylor was the better pick. I guess, you know, we'll see who ends up picking up Smith Marset if he makes something else out of uh, his career. But uh, I don't think there's anything to be super concerned about if you're Vikings fans for this move, because we're talking about a guy that you know, had a handful of catches last year, had an entire training camp. Two coaching staffs got a look at him and didn't play him a whole lot. So there might be some upside there, but not in the same way as bringing in a former first round pick like Jalen Rager, who has actually played before and had some levels of success, not a lot. And he's going to go down as the guy who was picked before Justin Jefferson. And those two being on the same team will inevitably bring that question with him. But when you look at his numbers, average is about 11 yards per catch, got about 600 yards receiving for his career. Like these aren't numbers of someone who can't step on an NFL field. So he provides a little bit of that uh, extra depth for them. I would still say that beyond Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and KJ Osborne, it's not a scenario that they want to have to play anybody else for a significant amount of time. But should it be a short-term injury or something like that, um, then Jalen Rager should be able to step in. And again, if they feel like there's anything there for the future, if any of them you know, inside this new front office liked Rager coming out of the draft, think he was misused for X, Y, and Z reasons, certainly did not have the most accurate passers throwing him the football in Philadelphia. It is kind of an old story in the NFL of the first rounder trying to you know, get that second chance with someone else. Uh, we will see if it ends up working for the Vikings. A couple other things to talk about. Kellen Mond is gone. He is with now the Cleveland Browns. They picked him up. So, you know, there were people around the league that were high on Kellen Mond when he came out in the draft. And it's the same sort of story where some other team thinks, well, maybe we could develop him. Maybe we can give him a shot. And maybe they will. Usually the, <laughs> players like that just sort of shuffle from team to team to team, and then a new group comes in, and that's the end of it. Um, but Cleveland picked him up because they must feel like he could be a viable backup option. Uh, Sean Mannion is signing in the practice squad with Seattle. He, I think, might – I mean, he played his college ball kind of out in the Pacific Northwest. I don't know if that makes a difference at Oregon State, but – um, you know, not staying here. So now it's the Nick Mullen show, only two quarterbacks at practice today. And that's that Armand Watts signed with the Chicago bears. So revenge game, obviously. I mean, really though, signing with the Chicago bears, they're not a good enough team that it should matter, but you certainly have that thought go through your mind. Like, oh, well, that guy is going to be very motivated playing you, and it does potentially help Chicago. I mean, Watts, uh, they may not have looked at him as a fit for this team, and they may not have looked at him as, as certainly not a long-term fit, but signing in Chicago, he could be a helpful player to them. Uh, we mentioned it before uh, you know, on the channel, but you know, when it comes to uh, his pass rush rate, it was actually pretty solid. Um, that he was able to get after the quarterback a decent amount last year and prove that he could play extended snaps. So now he ends up in Chicago, not the end of the world that Armand Watts is in the division, but that's the facts. He's in the division and I'm sure there it will be written about when the Vikings play the bears that they are playing someone that they cut because we always have to have revenge games. So that's kind of uh, the news of the day for where we're at. And uh, there still could be more movement for the Minnesota Vikings as they solidify this roster. They've got a few days before they go into full blown. It is the season time mode. Uh, so they could still shuffle around, but very interesting by my count, 22 of the 53 players on the roster are players who were not here last year. So Kwesi Adafo Menta is making this team his very much his own, his roster, his vision 
for the types of players that they want. The same goes for this coaching staff. And I think Ross Blacklock is probably a part of that as well. So the Vikings still making some moves here and uh, shuffling around the roster, but the bones of the thing, the starters, the key players to this team still very much the same. It's just, they added a, a couple of different players who could have significant roles depending on how things play out in Rager and Ross Blacklock. So that's enough for me here from TCO Performance Center. I will uh, catch you all next time.